Hey, how are you doing today? We have the awesome opportunity to partake of the Lord's Supper together. Um, and it's a little difficult when you're not in the building with us. So I'll ask you to go grab a piece of bread um, and some juice if you'd like to take it with us. And in the event you can't find anything, um, substitute as best you can. Uh, you can even feel free to pause right now to go find some stuff. But as we enter into worship today, I just want to invite you to recognize the joyous occasion that Palm Sunday is. That's what today is. The, the Sunday before Easter um, was when Jesus announced, I guess, the coming of the kingdom by walking into Jerusalem. Actually, he rode on a, a colt. And, and so we have this awesome image of Jesus being celebrated even a week before he knows what's about to come. And so I invite you in that same idea to recognize the same thing the Jews did when they were praising their Messiah come, that we now trade our fear for joy. We trade our sorrows for hope. And, and God has told us that we are loved people and you are loved. And I'm so glad you're with us this day, uh, morning, evening, wherever it might be for you when you're listening. Um, we're just going to start with this song and uh, may it bless you. We're going to do a couple of different things, uh, maybe a little different than our normal service. Dave, uh, Pastor Dave, will bring communion before the message. Um, and we're just going to close with one song. Um, and so we love you. We're so glad you're with us. We hope you can join us in person sometime soon. And, and let's just worship together. gives you the opportunity to declare the truth that you want for your life in Jesus. The same way the Israelites would have, the same way that we do today, that we want to be set free of all of those things that detract from us being able to share our hope and faith and light and peace with those who are around us. Be loving. We're going to enter into another song, and I'm not quite sure um, if you won't hear this necessarily play uh, as Dave presents communion. Um, again, we still are trying to figure out ways to best do this online thing. 
Um, so we're going to sing along uh, to a couple of different songs. We Fall Down, um, which is a song just of bringing confession before God to say, Lord, it's you. We know it's you. It's all you. Everything good in me is you. Um, into a song called Nothing But the Blood. Again, reaffirming our, our faith that it is through Christ's blood alone that we have been made right before God, and it is by Jesus alone. Faith in Jesus, profession of that faith, that gives us the opportunity to be found in the presence of God and even in relationship with God. And we're going to close with a song that has been really close to my heart um, called Doxology. Uh, and the doxology is really just an opportunity to say, um, God, thank you. So join with us as we sing. At the feet of Jesus, bring this up, your mercy and love. At the feet of Jesus, we cry, holy, 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 we cry. as we listen to this message, God. I pray that you would speak to our hearts, Lord, whatever you have to say to us today. God, I pray that we would be able to receive it. Um, and God, I just pray for those that are mourning um, the loss of a loved one this week. Lord, I pray that you would bring them comfort. God, and for those that are sick, Lord, I pray that you would be near to them, God, that even um, in through the tough times and the hard things, God, that you would just be showing and revealing yourself to them. God, more and more each day. Lord, would they know more of your great love and your great mercy and the hope that we have in you. Yeah, God.
God, I pray this all in your name. Amen. Good morning. One of the things that I want to do um, as we get closer, this is Palm Sunday, and one of the things I want to do as we get closer to Easter and this being coming and entering into the Holy Week, and we're not having a Good Friday service um, uh, per se in the sense of right physically together. And so what I'd like to do is serve communion today. And so if you are um, at home and you're watching this and you would like to participate in this, I encourage you to go get some juice and some bread um, or something similar to those things. And the, the offer of communion is, is given to anyone who is a follower of Jesus, who, who is given their heart to Jesus and, and wants to express the remembrance of what Jesus did on the cross, what he did on Good Friday for our sins. He took our place on the cross. His body was broken and bruised for us. He took on the sin of the entire world. It was laid on him. And then his blood was shed. The Bible says without the shedding of blood, there can be no forgiveness of sins. And so Jesus comes and he reminds us and he says, do this in remembrance of me. Let me read a passage of scripture. For I receive from the Lord what I pass on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke and he said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this whenever you drink in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. And listen to this. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim... You proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. In other words, you're declaring that this is what made a difference in my life. Jesus dying on the cross and rising from the dead for me, for my sins and me receiving that. And so if you're a follower of Jesus Christ, the invitation is for you to come and join this together. On that night, Jesus took the bread and he broke it and he gave it to his disciples. And he says, do this in remembrance of me, take and eat. And that night, he also took the cup and he passed it to his disciples. He said, this is the cup of a new covenant a new agreement, a new contract, if you will, but it's more than a contract. It's a covenant based on love, based on grace, not on your works, not on your own abilities, but totally based on the work of Jesus Christ and our acceptance of that and receiving that into our lives and receiving him into our lives. And he said, this is the cup of the new covenant. Whenever you drink it, do it in remembrance of me, remembering the foundations of our faith, and he said, take and drink and do this in remembrance of me. Lord Jesus, we are so grateful that as we enter into this holy week, this time of remembering your passion, your passion for you, good Father. But Jesus' passion for us. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross. That's your passion for us. Help us to remember. Help us to respond. Help us to love you back. To share this good news with others. We love you so much. And as we hear the word this morning, I pray that you would speak into our souls. Challenge us. Let us hear only your voice and no other voice. Holy Spirit, come. Speak today. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, the Last Supper was one of the times, one of the last times 
that the disciples saw Jesus alive. I mean, they witnessed the cross. They witnessed the trial. They witnessed um, Jesus being arrested. They witnessed the betrayal of Judas. And they witnessed the denial, at least Peter did, the denial of Jesus. But they never really had that connection with Jesus. But then he rose from the dead. And so this morning, and what we've been talking about over at least last week and next week and this week, is talking about Easter people. About the fact is that Jesus rose from the dead and the effect that Jesus had on their lives. You know, this is Palm Sunday. And on that day, there was a great rejoicing as Jesus entered into Jerusalem. Um, he was on a donkey and people were praising God and they were waving palm branches and they were excited. There was great joy that day. But then Friday comes. Jesus is crucified. There's no praising God. There's no waving of palm branches. The disciples are scattered. Peter denies Jesus. Judas betrays him. It's one of those moments you find in a movie when it seems like everything is falling apart for the heroes, the good guys. It doesn't seem like anything is going to work. And in that moment, there's just like utter despair. Oh, this is more than the movie. This is the most important moment in history. And then Jesus shows up. He shows up to Mary Magdalene first and changes her expectations, and she sees him. Jesus shows up then to the disciples after Mary. And she even ran to them and told them about it, but they don't believe her. But as Jesus shows up to these disciples, they're afraid. And Jesus changes their fear. As I said, we are, we are in a series called Easter People. And what I've been talking about is taking some of the situations on Easter Sunday where Jesus showed up in people's lives and the impact that he made in their moment, their encounter with Jesus and how it changed them. And that's what Jesus does. The resurrected Jesus, because he is alive, comes into all of our circumstances in everything that we're in, and he changes everything. And he did that morning or that evening, to the disciples. This is the end of the day now. He's already showed up to Mary and a few others. But now he shows up to the remaining disciples. In John chapter 20, verse 19, let me just start there. That evening, on the first day of the week, the disciples were meeting behind locked doors because they were afraid of the Jewish leaders. They're scared. They're scared, and so they, they go into a room, they lock the door so nobody can get in because they're afraid that, that they're going to be next, that the Jewish leaders and Romans may come after them. Suddenly, Jesus was standing there among them. Jesus comes into their midst. I love the fact is that locked doors don't stop Jesus. Nothing stops Jesus. He says, peace be with you, he said. Now, peace be with you is a normal greeting in, 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 in the Middle East. It's like shalom, peace. But this is more than just a greeting. They needed peace. They needed something to change the way they were feeling at that moment. They were afraid. And Jesus, when he said peace, meant so much more. As he spoke, he held out his hands for them to see, he showed them his side, and they were filled with joy when they saw their Lord. They were ecstatic. They were, they were jumping up and down. I don't know if they did high fives or not, but I mean, can you imagine that moment when they realized it really was Jesus? He spoke to them again, and he said, peace be with you. They really needed this. And then he says this, as the Father has sent me, so I am sending you. They sure needed peace then. The way he came... He wanted, he wanted them to go. The way the Father sent him, he says, now I'm sending you. He's sending us the same way. Verse 22, then he breathed on them and said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. Not only told them to go, he also gave them the power to do it. If you forgive anyone their sins, they are forgiven. If you refuse to forgive them, they are unforgiven. What Jesus is saying is, is your job is to go tell them that they can be forgiven. But if they refuse that forgiveness, they're not going to be forgiven. It's not like a loophole to get in. They have to be forgiven. And Jesus comes to do that. 
That moment, Jesus, the resurrected Jesus, shows up in a real moment of need, in a moment of their fear. Jesus changed their fear, this locked room of fear. Fear changes a lot for us. Think about it. Fear keeps us from going into a room because of a mouse or a spider. I mean, my wife hates spiders. And the other night she called me in to kill a spider. Now she stayed in the room because she did not want to leave the room and not find it. She wanted me to come and kill it. But fear does amazing things for us or to us. Fear gets us to do things that we don't normally do. And they're not always good things. Fear of people, opinions, gets us to compromise. So we do what others want. Or what's even worse, we don't do what God wants. Fear of the future gives us lost sleep. We do things to protect ourselves from the potential of what we're afraid of. And so we kind of put all these maybe superficial things in our life to protect us from the future instead of really focusing on the Lord. Sometimes our fear for our kids' safety makes us overprotective. Fear can force us into a locked room, but Jesus comes along and he blew their fears away. So I want to look at how the resurrected Jesus blew their fears away. Jesus shows up and changes their fear to peace. Verse 19 of chapter 20, John. On the evening of the first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Understand, as I've already said, they were afraid and full of fear. And Jesus shows up and says, peace be with you. The word for peace in Greek in the New Testament was written irene, which means harmony, at one again, freedom from worry. It's the idea that you don't have peace, but then all of a sudden you do have peace. You're in war, war you're in turmoil, you're in struggle, you're not in harmony, and then peace comes in and brings peace into a turmoil, into struggle, into so many things. Think about it. In that moment, Jesus showing up totally erased the last few days and the, their perceived reality of what they thought those last three days were. They thought it was over. They thought the future with Jesus was over. That, 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 that at best, they would go back to their old life. Or at worst, or at worst, would be arrested. And face the same fate as Jesus. That was their fear. That was their turmoil. And Jesus comes and says, peace. He sets it at one again. Harmony. He brings peace into their circumstances. Now, that doesn't mean that the Jews weren't still after them. It didn't mean that everybody was still upset. But in that moment, Jesus brings peace to them because they and Jesus are at one again. Are together. So often, we're locked in a room like the disciples. Locked in the room of fear. It controls us. It determines our future, our thoughts, even our decisions. We react out of fear. But Jesus shows up into our locked room of fear and says, peace. He brings peace. That is what the living, resurrected Jesus does. And let me ask you. Let me ask myself. What are you afraid of? What areas of your life do you need peace? Let me ask you, if Jesus showed up in your fear, in your turmoil, in your pain, what difference would he make? What if he said to you, peace be with you? But that's what he does. That is what he's doing. He wants to and is showing up in your locked room. In the stronghold of your life, it may be fear, it may be a million other things, but he shows up in your locked room. Let me say to you today that he does not want you to live in fear. I love what 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7 says this, For God did not give us a spirit of timidity or fear. God didn't give that to us. The enemy, yes. Us, yes. Maybe other people, yes. But not God. That's not God's will. That's not God's plan. He doesn't put that in us. We live this life in fear. But God did not give us a spirit of timidity, but a spirit of power, of love, and of self-discipline. That's what he gives us. So if there is fear or worry, 
which is just us thinking over all the things we're afraid of over and over again. We're fearful of this or that. That's not from God. He wants instead to give us power, love, and self-discipline or a sound mind and peace. Now, here's the thing. We need to understand that as the resurrected Jesus comes into the locked room of fear in our life, he gives us peace. He gave them peace. Jesus comes into our locked room of fear today. He is in our locked room of fear. And he wants us to see, to know him, and to seek him. And he will replace fear with peace. I've shared this verse so many times as as a pastor over the years. But it always needs to be a good reminder. I needed this the other night. In Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7, it says this, Do not be anxious about anything. Worry, fear, panic. Jesus doesn't want that for us. That's not his plan for our life. He doesn't want us to live there. But in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. So instead of hashing it over and over again in your mind and living in fear and worry and all the things that happened, happened to me the other night at 1.30 to about 3.30 or 3 o'clock in the morning. I know that because I was watching the clock. And I had this thing and I was mulling it over and over again in my mind and worried about it and fearful about how I'm going to deal with it and all of these things. And then about three o'clock in the morning, I remembered this passage. And I said, okay, God, I don't know how to deal with this. I don't know what I'm going to do. I, I don't even know what to say. But will you take care of it? Will you go before me? Will you give me the courage and the wisdom to take care of this and do this? And then I fell asleep and I didn't wake up till six when the alarm went off. With prayer, petition, with thanksgiving, he reminded me in the midst of that, that he had just answered a prayer that afternoon for me. He reminded me the other times that he answered prayers for me and he took my my turmoil and changed it into peace my worry into hope. And with thanksgiving, I started to thank him for that. And then this verse 7, And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. Peace, rest came again. That's what Jesus does for us. That's what Jesus does for all of us. He wants us to do it, but we have to come to him and give him, give him our stuff. The resurrected Jesus shows up. He showed up in my room last night. He shows up in your room. He shows up in your situation. Even if it's locked, Jesus shows up, and instead of fear, he wants to bring peace. Jesus shows up and changes their fear to peace and their fear to joy. Verse 19 of chapter 20 of John. On the evening of the first day of the week, when Jesus, when the disciples were together, with the doors locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus come and came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hand and his side. And the disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. When they saw the Lord, they were overjoyed. Think about what it's like when you see someone you haven't seen for a while. Think about that. You know, a few weeks ago, I got the opportunity to to meet with a couple that that I haven't seen for almost a year. And it was, I'll be honest with you, it, it brought joy to my heart. And I mean, it brought tears to my eyes. I can't imagine what it's going to be like in a few weeks when the Atlantic bubble opens up and I was able to go see my mom and my dad. My dad's been sick. I'll bring joy. I can't even imagine what it's going to be like when I see my son and my daughter-in-law, my four grandchildren, who I've not seen in over a year because they live in the States. I can't imagine... The joy I'll feel when someday I see some family and friends that are no longer here. But I know they're in heaven and someday I will see them again. The joy that that will bring. And I can't even imagine the moment when I get to heaven and I see Jesus. The one who is my savior. The one who answers my prayers. The one who walks with me. Whose presence has been so real in my life. I can't even imagine what that's going to look like. I love the song, I Can Only Imagine. 
And it goes like this, just the first verse and chorus. I can only imagine what it will be like when I walk by your side. I can only imagine what my eyes will see with your face is before me. I can only imagine. Surrounded by your glory, what will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus? Or in awe at you be still? Will I stand in your presence? Or to my knees will I fall? Will I sing? Hallelujah. Will I be able to speak at all? I can only imagine. All those moments bring great joy and will bring great joy. But in the moment when Jesus showed up to those disciples and they saw him, they witnessed that this was Jesus. He showed up and he showed them their hands, his hands, his side, his wounds. They were overjoyed. He really did rise from the dead. He really did say what he said he was going to do. He really meant it. They were like, this is real. This is true. He's right here in front of us. But here's the thing. Jesus comes into our locked room of fear, our locked room of hopelessness, our locked room of despair and depression and grief and temptation and worry. And he wants to bring joy. And he does bring joy. Because he's the resurrected Jesus. He's alive. He's here in our situation. I know that sounds cliche. And a nice little quote. He's here in your situation. But it's true. He is here. He's with us. He's in our hearts. Just this last week I was reading through John. And I've been doing that as we've been leading up. And many of you have as well. Leading up to Easter. And John chapter 14 really struck me. Verse 21 and 23 says this, Whoever has my commands and obeys them, he is the one who loves me. So, so really the one people who love him are the ones who obey him. And he who loves me will be loved by my father. God will love them too. And I too will love him. And listen to this, and show myself to him. Then Judas, not Judas Iscariot, said, But Lord, why do you intend to show yourself to us and not to the world? He's basically saying, well, why are you going to show yourself to the world or to us? And why are you excluding them? And Jesus is like, it's not about race. It's not about being Jewish or Gentile. This is what he says. Jesus replied, if anyone loves me, he will obey my teaching. If you love me, that's what you do. You obey me. My father will love him too. And listen to this. And we'll come to him and make our home with him. Jesus shows up in your situations. Jesus will manifest himself. He will show you himself. When you walk in obedience, when you do what he's called you to do, when you really love him, and Jesus wants to show up in your situation, he wants to be real in your life. This is what Jesus says. He'll show up in our lives as we know and follow his commands. Because here's the thing. When we know and we follow his commands and we walk the way he wants us to walk, that's where Jesus is. That's where Jesus is walking. And that's where Jesus will show up in our lives. And it will bring great joy. There's no greater joy than knowing the presence of the Lord in your life. Sensing his presence. Knowing his answers to your prayers. That's joy. When I think of the times over the years when Jesus has shown himself to me, how he's answered prayer over and over again, there was great joys in, those, in that moment. There was like this, yes, this gospel is really true. Jesus is really true. Jesus is really alive. I see his hands. I see his side. Now, I don't really literally see those things, but he's so real and so present because when we do and when he shows up in the moments when he says, this is what I'll do, it's a powerful moment. It brings such joy and excitement. Now I know, maybe right now you can't see him. But like he's been with you before, he will show up again. When we know his word, when we follow him, and we keep on keeping on and keep on doing what he asks us to do, he will show up and he will bring great joy. It will be like this overwhelming sense of joy. Jesus shows up and changed their fear to peace, their fear to joy, and their fear to courage. Again, Jesus said, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. 
And with that, he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone their sins or his sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Now, Jesus is saying, peace with you. Be with you again. Because now he's calling them from fear to peace, from joy to courage, or to joy and to courage. Go as the Father has sent me into the world. I'm sending you. He's not calling them to have the courage to leave the locked room. Jesus wants to bring peace and joy into our locked room. But he wants to give us courage and compassion to not stay there. But to tell others about what he has done in your life. This is not about just enjoying the blessing of peace and joy in our lives. Jesus is saying, tell others about it. Tell others about what I've done. Tell others about the good news of the gospel. The risen Savior is not just about us. It's not about our salvation alone. As someone said it this way, salvation is about just getting to heaven, then he would just take us there. Now, we're here for a purpose. We're here to live and to tell others about Jesus and have the courage to do that so that they can experience the resurrected Jesus. But it's more than just telling us to go. Jesus then gives them the power to go. The Holy Spirit, he breathes on them and he gives them the Holy Spirit, the courage. The Holy Spirit enables us and empowers us to do the things that we're called to do. And the Holy Spirit is not just so that we can feel good and be holy. He comes for us and he gives us the courage to go. In Acts chapter 1, verse 6 and 8, Jesus told the disciples that they were to wait for the coming of the Holy Spirit. And one of the things that the Holy Spirit came to do was was to go and to tell others about Jesus. Let me read this in verse 6 of Acts chapter 1. So when the disciples, when they met together, they asked him, Lord, Are you at this time going to restore the kingdom of Israel? Basically saying, you know, God, when are you going to set up your earthly kingdom? He said to them, it's it's not for you to know the times or the dates the Father has set by his own authority. In other words, it's not really your job to know these things. In fact, I don't even know. In other passages, he says, verse 8, but this is what's important. You won't know all this stuff, but this you do know. But you will receive power. When the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. I understand you want to know all this other stuff, but this is what I'm giving you the Holy Spirit to do so that you can tell others about me. So you can tell others about the resurrected Jesus, the resurrected Jesus who brings peace and joy into our locked rooms, the resurrected Jesus that takes people from sin to life, from death to life that can change their life and transform them and make them a new creation in Christ. That's what Jesus has called us to do because that's what he did for us because he's alive. He's the resurrected Jesus. These guys were locked in a room of fear. But now Jesus is asking them to step out of that room and gives them the courage to step out of that room to tell others about the living, resurrected Jesus. That is what the resurrected Jesus does. He gives us courage to walk out of the room to tell others about Jesus who is alive and can change our lives and to take us to a whole new level. To help us to be witnesses at our job, even if we've not been in the past. To help us be witnesses in our home, with our extended family, to our neighbors, to the people we we do entertainment and life with. Jesus just didn't die and rise from the dead for us alone. He died so we could tell others, to give hope to others, to help them to walk out of their locked room, to be free, to come to know Jesus in their lives. So I have to ask myself, what locked room am I in? What stronghold have I been believing and living Because the resurrected Jesus died and rose from the dead so that I wouldn't have to stay in that locked room of fear or any locked room. Maybe your locked room is fear. 
Maybe it's worry. Maybe it's hopelessness. Maybe it's temptation or sin that you just keep on giving into. Or maybe you don't even know Jesus and you're full of doubt and you wonder if this Jesus is real. Jesus wants to come and show you that he's real, that he rose from the dead. He wants to help you out of your locked room of doubt and doing it on your own. And he wants you to come into a relationship with him. The resurrected Jesus changes our fear to peace, changes our fear to joy, and changes our fear to courage. So I encourage you today, wherever you are, that God is speaking to you and showing you that you're in a locked room. He enters it. And he says, peace. He brings joy. He brings hope. And he brings courage to help you to walk out of your locked room. Not because he just said so, but because he's alive. Because he's real. And he can show you who he really is. And he can be so real to you. And he wants to be real because he is alive. He is not dead. He is not some 2,000-year-old God that we worship. He is an everlasting God that always lives and lives for us and lives in us and wants to change everything in our lives. Let's pray. Lord, I don't know what people are doing right now. I don't know what they're thinking. I don't know what locked room that they're in. But I pray, Jesus, that you would walk into that room, that you would show up in that room of fear, of worry, of doubt, of unbelief, and blow all their excuses away so that they see there is somebody greater and more powerful than their fears, more powerful than their doubt, because you are alive. Lord, will you please show up in their room today, in their life, and help them to walk out? Lord, if there's somebody here today who's watching who doesn't know you, and they've struggled with doubt, they've wondered whether you are real, they, they, they maybe just feel like, hey, maybe if I try, I'll fail, I don't know if this will work, whatever ever fear or whatever thing is going on in their life right now, whatever room they're in, Jesus, please show up and show them through the power of the Holy Spirit that they can trust you, that you love them, that you died for them, and you rose from the dead, and you offer forgiveness, and you offer hope, and you offer a relationship. Lord, help them to pray this prayer. Dear Jesus, I've lived in doubt and fear. I've lived on my own. And I know that my sins put you on the cross but I'm asking Jesus today that you would forgive me. And I receive you into my life. I ask you to come into my life. And I'm asking you to walk, help me walk out of this room of fear, of doubt, or whatever it is that's holding me back, because I want to live for you, and I want you to live in me. I pray this in Jesus' name. And if they prayed that, show them that it's true. Encourage believers today to walk out of some of the rooms that they're stuck in and help them to be free. Help them to be free from fear. And I pray this in the powerful and awesome name of Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you. And if you made a decision for Jesus today, if you prayed a prayer, if you need somebody to help you, to counsel you through that process, or just talk to you, if you have any questions, please feel free to contact the church. You can uh, go to our website, uh, heartlandwc.com, and there's information there. Or you can call the church, 375 or 506 375 4896. God bless you, and God be with you in this holy week as we lead up to Easter. And hope to see you next Sunday on Easter Sunday, the day we celebrate the resurrected Jesus. God bless. I hope that God has spoken to you through this message. 
We're just going to sing this last song, simple and easy. You're welcome to sing along with us. When you walk into the room, everything changes. Darkness starts to tremble at the light that you bring. When you walk into the room, every heart starts burning. Nothing matters more than just to sit here at your feet and worship you. We love you. We'll never stop. We can't live without you, Jesus. We love you. And we can't get enough. starts to vanish every hopeless situation ceases to exist when you walk into the room oh the dead begin to rise cause there is resurrection light in all you do we love you we'll never stop we can't hearts are yours. We want you. We want you. Come and consume God. All we are, we give you permission. Our hearts are yours. We want you. We want you. Come and consume God. All we are, we give you permission. Our hearts are yours. We want you. We want you. you this week as you go. May you find that you are made secure in the love of Jesus Christ and that fear and anxiety and depression and all of the things that aren't of God would be blown out of your way. That you would see clearly the power of God working in your life. You are loved. God bless you.